Hello and welcome to Money Life. Today we are going to discuss insider trading or rather the manner in which the Securities and Exchange Board of India, our market regulator, looks at insider trading cases. Now we know that insider trading is extremely difficult to prove all over the world. But in India, there are at least three celebrated cases where SEBI seems to be going overboard, overzealous, damaging reputations and then losing all the way in the Supreme Court. So, it's a what happened last week is the case of Abhijit Rajat, who used to be the chairman of Gammon India Limited. And what happened with him is a repeat of what happened in another case called Udayant Malhotra, which we have talked about in a previous blog, but worth a reminder, both cases went to the Supreme Court. So, on 19th September, what happened is that the Supreme Court threw out SEBI's interpretation of insider trading and acquitted Abhijit Rajan in a case that goes back to 2014. Now, what the case is, is very simple. I'm going to tell you in a nutshell. In 2013, Mr. Rajan, as Chairman and Managing Director of Gammon Infrastructure Projects, which I'm going to call GIPL or rather Gammon Infrastructure, sold a bunch of shares just before what is called a material event that has to be reported to stock exchanges. Now, the event was reported, the price went up and SEBI decided that since you sold it just before, you have committed insider trading. So, what was this event? It was the share sale based on an agreement. Now, Gammon India and Simplex Infrastructure both had two special purpose vehicles and had 49% holding in each other's vehicles. After a while, they decided this is not working out and they wanted to terminate the agreements, which meant that each would hold their entire equity in their own projects. This, in fact, was good for Gammon India. And the share price has gone up, Gammon Infrastructure, remember? And the share price has gone up after that. Now, SEBI says, nothing doing. You sold before, so it doesn't matter that you didn't profit. You have committed insider trading. Now, if you go by the words of the SEBI regulation, there are five, six parameters to decide insider trading. So the very fact that you have sold just before a reportable event is insider trading. But do you or do you not apply your mind? So in 2014, SEBI decided that he had acted based on what they call unpublished price sensitive information or UPSI. And that this was UPSI and Mr. Rajan is guilty of insider trading. They, along with two other directors, they imposed a fine, they impounded some money. Things went to court. But what is interesting here is that, A, this was not the only company. There was one more which did exactly this in the same reporting. But I'll come to that later. I believe, my sources say, that people approach Rajan to say, why do you want to fight this? Why not settle it? You don't admit guilt, pay up money, because in any case, we're going to find him. He said, nothing doing, I've done nothing wrong. And I'll tell you why he had done nothing wrong. Because he wasn't getting a single penny of that money realized from the uh, sale of shares. In fact, he was doing it as a part of corporate debt restructuring of the parent company, Gamma India. And if he hadn't sold the shares and paid back bankers, they were going to drag Gamma India into bankruptcy. So it was time critical. It was part of a contract. It was agreed. And this sale happened on the basis of that. So he did not profit. Now, the basic rule of insider trading is why do you flout rules and do insider trading at all? Which is, why do you trade before a material event which is going to take share prices up or down? You do it because you either want to make a big profit or you want to avoid a loss. In this case, Rajan didn't get a penny. So there's no question of him having done insider trading for any personal benefit. And as he says, it was part of a CDR. SEBI, not interested. So SEBI, issued him a show cause notice, levied a penalty of 1.09 crore, dragged his reputation through the mud, he went in appeal to the Securities Appellate Tribunal, which in 2019 upheld his view and set aside the case and said, sorry, we don't agree. So SEBI went to the Supreme Court. Now, before SAT, SEBI had argued that, hey, look, we know that he didn't profit. So we are not going to initiate any punitive action. All we have asked is disgorgement. Now the disgorgement also is interesting because when I say the share price went up, 
and Rajan did not even profit nor did the lenders. So how did they come up with it? That itself is controversial because Rajan's lawyers argued that SEBI picked a particular day, one day difference so that they could show that there was a 1.09 crore gap. Now, is this what regulation is all about? That you stretch and pull and drag people into the mud so that you're going to make out a case of insider trading? This law is notorious. When someone has not benefited, why would SEBI go after it when each of us sees on Twitter, on Telegram, on WhatsApp, hundreds of people getting information and which is far more egregious than this. But no, SEBI went to the Supreme Court, filed a civil appeal number 563 of 2020, which again upheld Rajan's contention in a well-explained judgment. So not only did it let it off, but it also pointed out in that judgment that SEBI's action, and I told you this before, had let off another company where the sale of shares had happened to fulfill margin requirements. So SEBI did not even proceed on that. So why is payment a sale for payment of margin requirements so different from payment to CDR, that is lenders and banks, where we are all concerned about bad loans? There's no explanation because who's going to challenge it? Who's going to bring it up? It's only mentioned in Mr. Rajan's litigation, both at SAT as well as the Supreme Court. So first of all, in 2016, SEBI's first overzealous listeners was cut down by its own whole time member S. Raman. He let off the other two directors, said Rajan alone has to disgorge, then sat through it out in 2019. Now to 2022, 19 September, Supreme Court also has thrown it out. It's interesting to know what the two judge bench of Justice Indira Banerjee and Justice V. Ramasubramanyam said. They noted that the sale by the respondent of the shares held by him in CIPL would not fall within the mischief of insider trading as it was somewhat similar to a distress sale made before information could have a positive impact on the price of shares. It also noted that the rise in the share price after the sale was beneficial to shareholders but not to Rajan. He didn't derive any benefit at all. Come back to my question. Why would SEBI officials not show the same clarity of thinking that the Supreme Court showed and SAC showed when they are handling insider trading cases day after day after day? But the Supreme Court had to point out that SEBI itself has exonerated the co notice that I talked about, consolidated infrastructure, which paid margin money. Now, this is not the only time. This is what is important. As I said in the beginning of this video blog, this is not the only case. The more celebrated case has been that of Udayant Malhotra. This happened in the middle of COVID, believe it or not. 15 June 2020, when we were right in the middle of a lockdown, SEBI's whole time member Anand Barua issued an ex parte order against Udayant Malhotra, Managing Director of Dynamite Technologies, impounding gains of 3.83 crore for what he called an insider trading transaction which happened, hold your breath, in 2016. I have done a separate video blog on this, so if you are interested, you can look at it. He had sold 51,000 shares six days before the financial results. Now, why did he sell? Like in this case, it was his shares were pledged with infrastructure leasing and financial services, which as you know, has gone belly up. The lenders are interested in the money. There was a 50 crore loan. So he had to sell the shares to repay that money as part of an agreement signed by him. But Sebi said nothing doing. In the middle of COVID, an ex parte order asking him to disgorge. He had not profited. The money did not go to him, exactly like Abhijit Rajan. This case also wound up, it went to SAT, SAT throughout Sebi's contention. In fact, SAT had very strong words to say, no need for this kind of hasty action. But hasty action is just one part of it. Why this overzealousness? When it finally went to a three-judge bench of the Supreme Court, which included Dhananjay Chandrachud, Justice Indira Malhotra and Indira Banerjee, it upheld SAT's contention, written about this before in Money Life, and said that there was no question of insider trading. Third case, a young man called Shreha Stambe, similar overreach, 
It is again cited as a precedent by securities law experts. Mr. Tambe was senior vice president of Biocon. He sold 17,440 shares after obtaining a pre-clearance from the company because he needed to make a part payment to buy a residential property. This happened in December 2017. His mistake was that he didn't report it within the 48 hours. That is the only problem. It was within the window. But Sevi said, "No, you traded on unpublished information." Dragged him to the mud, issued a release, imposed a monetary penalty of two lakhs. As usual, went to court. Finally, what stood is the delay, so the penalty of one lakh. Now, I come back to this. There is so much of mischief and manipulation happening happening in the market. There is more than enough for Sebi to do. In fact, Sebi needs to find a way to focus on what is really important, so that orders happen quickly. Where they send a deterrent signal, we do not want them to drag things like 2016 to 2022 to various courts, wasting taxpayers' money on cases like this, which just smack of overzealousness. Don't make Sebi look good at all. In fact, it has a chilling impact and makes you wonder what kind of regulation does Sebi follow. So instead of this, there's a need for greater restraint, application of mind on the part of the regulator. And remember, India is a country where reputations are damaged. There is never any restitution because everything just drags on, so nobody can claim anything. We are not talking about three cases here. In fact, Money Life Foundation published a detailed review of insider trading cases, which was mentored by securities law expert. Advocate Ravi Chandra Hegde was a partner of Parinam Law. He mentored a study of landmark judgments that was done by two students, law school students. Looked at judgments till from 2015. What did the study conclude? It said clearly that Sebi had failed to adopt a uniform approach in deciding similar cases. The similar have the same approach. Instead, Sebi is sitting there in appellate bodies. This leads to divergent orders that lead. to unnecessary adjudication by appellate forums i am paraphrasing here such cases when they are struck down embarrass the regulator don't they is there any internal evaluation and checks and balances against overzealous actions by sebi investigators and officers as well as people who write these judgments if it affects them if it affects their chances of promotion you will see something different Coming back to the study, it concluded that SEBI needs to revisit its regulation and look at two things. One is what is called mens rea, or motive, or a guilty mind. So, was there a motive in Udayant Malhotra and Rajan? Did they benefit? Not at all. So, this has to be looked at instead of following a you know bean counter kind of approach, saying these are the five rules and we will not apply our mind. We will call it insider trading, even if you haven't benefited. So, the interpretation issue. also has to apply not just to whether you have a guilty mind and whether you benefited to what is called circumstantial evidence or preponderance of probabilities this is a huge element in how insider trading cases are decided and there's one more case now where sebi has had a bit of egg on its face which is called the balaram balaram gar case or pc jolas case where sebi decided that a family which had split in 2001 with a proper partition agreement because they stayed on the same plot of plot of land were considered to be living in the same residence and were guilty of insider trading the supreme court says we don't agree because preponderance of probability should have a lot more showing up than just the fact that they reside on a plot of land in fact this itself needs revisiting because sebi has to recognize what the world has recognized not talking about something that no one knows that insider trading is extremely difficult to prove and if you're not going to be able to prove it just because there are no consequences on the officers handing out these judgments you can't go after people and damage their reputation and damage the reputation of the regulator itself the regulator has to be seen as fair even handed it has to be behave like this if you agree share this video because people ought to know what is going on thank you